Hey everyone, welcome to another match of Is It Typhoon Delver. Today we are playing Red Green Ponza. Always enjoy playing Red Green Ponza. Our opening hand is pretty good, even though we only have one land. We start off with Delver, the most powerful play that you can do in modern, right? Uh, well, one of them, in my opinion. Our opponent is starting off with a basic force, and now they have a stomping ground and a scavenging ooze, so my spidey senses are tingling, and I figured that we were playing Blood Moon deck. But looks like they didn't tingle strong enough for me this game because uh, I believe I'm about to fetch for Steam Vents. Not the smartest move, Kev. Not the smartest move. I would have been perfectly happy with an island there. It is what it is. I put Shark Typhoon to the bottom. I believe right now with this current hand it's just not something we want. We attack in with our 1-1 Delver. And now we are going to face the Wrath of Blood Moon, but we are definitely going to counter it and, you know, exile a sleight of hand to get rid of it. Close call, close call. Archmage's Charm definitely flips Delver. We don't have the mana for it, but hey, let's just put our Sprite Dragon down. We attack with both. I'm happy with that. It's a good play. Clothis. That's going to be interesting. That's also going to be slightly painful. That Misty Rainforest is useful. I quickly fetch for an island to make sure I'm Blood Moon proof now. Um, those are not bad cards to see. So, now we need to win out as fast as possible. And as fast as possible means this. Bring our opponent down to one. Of course, they're going to do whatever they need to do to gain life right now, but unless they could deal with our threats, we essentially win next turn. Enjoying Sprite Dragon here, by the way. As a lovely 4-4. What's our opponent going to do? What? They, they legitimately can't do anything. That's what we thought. We're going to go on to game two. So look, we run our own Blood Moons. Uh, we just didn't... <laughs> fetch correctly there at the beginning realistically what do we bring in that's a, that's a serious question what do we bring in i feel like our main board is pretty much well suited to deal with red green ponza so my main concerns here are glory bringer presumably which is why i'm potentially bringing in magmatic sinkhole and dismember to sandal stroke as well essentially those four cards are for glory bringer so if our opponent is playing glory bringer that's what they're coming in for there are a few other cards that those cards would target. I think three hate cards specifically for, for Glorybringer is enough. I don't want to weaken my, my main board too much because I think actually our main board is pretty good. This hand is a mulligan. Way too many lands. This hand is a mulligan. No lands. <laughs> this hand essentially has to be a keep. We have one threat and no real reliable way to get to two mana, but sleight of hand hopefully will help us there. I imagine I get rid of Mana Leak here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Alright, starting game two on five cards. Not the best. Alright. And we definitely Bolt Arbor Elf first, no matter what. Bolt that Arbor Elf. Yeah. Say what you will, Lightning Bolt is still powerful and modern. Topia Sprawl, alright. All right, still no lands. That's not great. <laughs> Scalding Tarn is going to be a snap pick, but we can't do anything else this turn. We can go fetch for an island if Blood Moon does come down, and that is actually pretty useful. Bloodbraid Elf instead. All right. Not a fan of what I'm seeing. They cascade into another Utopia Sprawl, which is, I guess, uh, not bad. There we go. Bolt us with their elf. We're not gonna shock. Uh, we're not gonna fetch because we actually want lands, but we don't get one anyway. I feel like I have no choice here but to cast Sprite Dragon. And I do a bit of boo boo here. I'm not. I'm clearly not used to Sprite Dragon having haste <laughs> because Sprite Dragon could have attacked there for one, and now I lose out on that one potential damage. But it doesn't really matter because Chandra is pretty much gonna, you know, force me to concede. There's no way I'm gonna get out of that. So. We did mulligan to five in my in my defense. 
not much we could have done there. Our opponent had just very good draws. We did not, as is the case with most modern games. Not much we want to do. We brought this member in. We got rid of one more side of hand. This hand is keepable. It's a good mix of threat and lands. It's perfectly fine. And we are Blood Moon safe. So, our Brelf comes down. We have no answer for our Brelf. But we do get a turn to flip Delver, which is beautiful. Just what I want to see. Here, I attack in again with Delver. And I cast Sprite Dragon second. Again, like an idiot, because I keep forgetting that Sprite Dragon has haste. But, uh, whatever. Let's just uh, pretend that didn't happen. So now, I believe we're going to get Blood Mooned. Oh, no, we're going to get Blood Braid Elfed. Cool. They cascade into another Utopia Sprawl. I'm okay with this. I am okay with this. So they're obviously going to attack and we're not blocking. Alright, we get Shark Typhoon. Pretty good draw. Pretty good draw. So we're going to attack in. Attack him for four, and I'm probably not going to do anything else. Can't do much else anyway. That's of much use at the moment. Let's see if our opponent casts some sort of big mana smell. We do have Disdainful Stroke, so I'm not too worried here. Alright, so our opponent's going to get six mana. It's kind of scary. It's kind of... Blood Moon... Well, we are going to respond with a fetch first, obviously. And let's see if I decide to... Yeah, I let it resolve. So I'm okay with it. I mean, the, our opponent is probably feeling some dread there. Because I'm like, alright, well, I don't really care. I clearly have permission up. And, you know, exactly. So this is why I decided to let Blood Moon pass. Because I want it to protect me from actual removal. Alright, Season Pyromancer comes down. Our opponent is building up on their side. We're going to let that 3 through. Don't really have a choice. We draw another land, which is actually not bad news. Now, it just comes down to a bit of math. But, you know, essentially here it's a race. We need to put as much pressure as possible. Here I'm saying, okay, do I waste a Shark Typhoon, essentially? To kind of well it's not really wasting i mean shark typhoon will not trigger the the cost reduction on storming entities so it's really more what do i want to do here do i want to cast a shark typhoon to make sprite dragon bigger is it going to be worth it i decide no pretty sure that's going to mean that i'm just going to let things go and see what happens on our opponent's turn i'm not staring down lethal just yet our opponent has two cards in hand. So I feel like I'm okay right now. Depending on what happens end of turn, I will almost certainly cycle Shark Typhoon. But we'll see. Scavenger Juice comes down. Can't really answer it. Luckily, it doesn't have any creature targets at the moment in the graveyard. So they're not going to be getting any life and getting bigger. Which is a big save for us. Alright, our opponent attacks in all the way. We are not going to do anything to stop this attack. So we're going to take a bunch of damage. I forgot that I can't even fetch, so... Yeah, that, that Scalding Tarn is a mountain. So here we are going to get a few things, and our opponent realizes that they lose, because we would have had a 3-3 Sprite Dragon, plus a 2-2 Shark Token, plus our Delver, and wham, we win the game. So, what did this game show you? That Shark Typhoon's pretty fun, and you don't need to hard cast it to win the games. <laughs> Just the ability to get an extra 2-2, two, 3-3, two, three, three, or even a 1-1 one, one flyer in the air, and draw a card can do more than enough to help you get the numbers you need to win. 
and that was a good example there. I'm also really surprised with Sprite Dragon's power so far. I haven't played enough games yet to be, you know, fully convinced, but so far I've been really, really impressed with Sprite Dragon. A lot more impressed than Hextricker, for example. I know they're not the same type of card, but they are cards where you need to essentially invest in them to make them bigger. And, you know, so far Sprite Dragon's just been doing a lot better, so I've been pretty happy about that. Shark Typhoon, I just like drawing it and playing it. That's what I want to do when I'm having fun. Hope you enjoyed the match as much as I did. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoy my content in general, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter. All that stuff really, really helps me out a lot. And of course, thank you to my patrons as well. Thanks and have a good one.